Might be TMI, but if you're a dog parent, you're gonna wanna know this. This is what Sunny's little room looks like. I made a big mistake. A new addition to my essentials haul. It sits really nice and snug on this back seat. I honestly think every dog owner should have one of these. Absolute waste of money, don't even bother. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a lovely day. Today's video is a little follow-up video to one that I filmed two years ago now. So when I first brought my puppy Sunny home, I filmed this video. Puppy essentials, a little haul of everything that I had bought for Sunny. Thought I was an absolute pro. To be fair, I did do a lot of research. I did get a lot of it right, but there are definitely a few things that I said you needed that you definitely don't. And there are also things that I didn't know I needed until now. So I thought today I would let you know everything that I regret buying for my puppy, everything that I wish I bought, and everything in between. But first of all, I think we should have a little puppy update. So when I filmed the Puppy Essentials video back then, this is what Sunny looked like. She was so tiny. And this is Sunny now. I mean, she is still pretty small. If you didn't know, she's a Cavapoo. Her mum is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and her dad is a Toy Poodle. And this is her. She's my little angel. I got her in lockdown and my life has significantly improved since. Anyway. I'll let her get back to her nap. Like I did last time, I'll leave timestamp throughout this video so you can skip to a section that you particularly need if you want to do that. If not, you can watch the whole thing, but I do just wanna say before I start, I am no dog expert. Everything that I'm about to say is just what's worked for me and Sunny, so take everything I say with a pinch of salt, but I hope I can be helpful. I'm gonna start off with the category of essentials. Obviously, an essential for your dog is a bed. So, Sunny had a couple of beds when she was a puppy. She had this bed from Silent Night, and another one from Amazon. It was just this little grey and pink bed. The pink bed is going strong. It is still her number one. Before, I said that this little grey and pink bed would go in her crate when she was a bit older. It actually didn't. I ended up buying a new crate because she outgrew the one she had when she was a puppy. I thought her puppy crate would last her her entire life. But even if you've got a small breed like Sunny, in their crate, they need room to stand up and move around a little bit as they get older. So I did end up going from, I think it was a 24 inch crate to a 30 inch crate which is what she sleeps in now and it's perfect for her. I'll include a little clip of her little area and what it looks like now. This is what Sunny's little room looks like now that she's a bit older. The crate is a lot bigger, I'll insert a little clip, but this was her first little puppy crate and this is the 30 inch crate. And inside here, as you can see, she now has this bed which fits in there really nice and snug. This is actually a memory foam bed, which I know sounds excessive, but memory foam beds are actually really good for dogs because they help support their back when they sleep. We've got Lammy in there. She's had him since the day she came home. Every single morning when we come down, she's laying with her bum this end and her face across Lammy like a pillow. She's also got the same little water bowl that she's always had in there and she does actually drink from this during the night especially when it's hot but I never fill it up too high just because it can be dangerous if they like fell asleep in the bowl. Sunny would never do that but I'm not going to take any chances obviously. Still got the crate cover to keep it a little bit darker. On top this is her little box full of harnesses, my dog walking bag, her coats, things like that and in the winter this blanket goes in her bed. Here's the little silicone bowl, this one gets filled at breakfast and dinner. Her little bed gets moved around the house, but if I was going to be leaving her alone, this is exactly what the room would look like. Nothing else in it. She doesn't really play by herself, so I don't leave toys out for her anymore. She just sleeps in this bed, or she'll move to her crate and back again. And then we still have this baby gate. This is probably my number one thing that I would recommend for dog owners. It pulls across like so, keeps her nice and secure. There's no way she can hurt herself on anything in this room now. And I really like that it doesn't have the bars like traditional baby gates do. So there's no way she can try and squeeze through it and get stuck. It's too high for her to jump over it. Air can still flow in and out of the room. If you're wanting to section off an area of your house for your new puppy, this gate is the best thing money can buy. It's linked down below in the Amazon storefront, but it is so worth purchasing. I said it before, I'll say it again, a cool mat is absolutely an essential. The same one that I got when Sunny was a puppy is still going strong. It does have a few scratch marks on it. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but she likes to dig to make it comfortable. A new addition to my essentials haul is a cool vest. I didn't know these existed until I think last summer but this is Sunny's cool vest. It's a little watermelon. It's from Amazon. I'll link as many of these essentials as possible in the description down below for you. Anyway, back to the cool vest. 
These are so good. It's a really thin material that you run under the tap, you get it all wet, wring it out and put it on your dog and it keeps them cool when the weather is really hot. Moving on to the toilet section. So I'm gonna start off with training pads. I bought so many of these before I bought Sunny Home and I really wish I didn't. I really regret buying them because I can count on one hand the amount of puppy pads we used. Sunny never learned to go to the toilet on a puppy pad when she was with her breeder. Her breeder would often take the puppies out in the garden to go to the toilet and I think that actually really help to toilet train her quicker. I just feel there's less confusion. If you can do it, I would recommend it. Obviously, it's not ideal for everybody, but we weren't too fussed about having to clean up a little wee every now and again. She probably weed in the house less than... 20 times I would say when she was a tiny eight week old puppy. She pooed in the house either four or five times. It really wasn't a lot at all. And I think that transition was a lot quicker because there were no puppy pads involved. But every dog is different. Every owner is different. If puppy pads work for you, that is absolutely fine. Just my personal opinion. I don't think I would bother with them if I was gonna go for round two of puppy parenthood. Not yet. <laughs> Poo bags. I buy a box of 500 on Amazon. They are biodegradable. They work out way cheaper than buying rolls of poo bags. And I haven't had to repurchase this box that many times. Something I included in the previous video was pooper scoopers. Absolute waste of money. Don't even bother, <laughs> honestly. There is no point in using it at all. You are never gonna scoop up a poo with a bare scoop. Trust me, you will use a poo bag every time. The two previous styles of pooper scoopers I had were this one that was like a little shovel and this extendable one. This never saw the light of day. Literally never left my house. I donated it to Dogs Trust in the end. Hopefully they're using it. I just had no use for it at all. But something I've found that is an absolute lifesaver is a poo grabber. Let me tell you, this may as well be attached to me at my hip because it comes everywhere with me. I can count on one hand the amount of poos I've picked up without this in the past two years. It comes with me in every handbag, with every outfit, to every outing, the poo grabber is present. And the way it works, you get your poo bag, clip it onto the end, fold the poo bag over it, and you can grab your poo like so. So you never actually have to touch the poo with your hand in the bag. I honestly think every dog owner should have one of these. Moving on to the food section. So in the previous video, I mentioned that I'd bought some silicone food bowls. They live to tell the tale. They are still well and truly in use. They've got a couple of metal bowls that go in for food and water. They're great, they keep the floor clean. Love it, couldn't recommend it enough. The next item is a snuffle mat. I actually said a couple of years ago that this was a waste of time, but now I completely disagree with that statement. I have completely changed my mind. I am a hardcore snuffle mat fan. I don't use a snuffle mat for Sunny's dinner. She actually eats butternut box, which is like a cooked meat vegetable concoction. However, I found they're great for treats. They're great for keeping your dog occupied for five minutes if you need to get some work done. And I have a few different types of snuffle mat that I like now. The first looks like this. It's just a little bowl. You can tighten it up if you want to make it a bit more difficult for your dog to get into. Sprinkle the treats in, let them find it. They'll have a whale of a time. There is also this little ball. I actually attached the shoelace through it and it has lasted two years. This doubles up as a toy. Sunny loves to play with it, pull it around, or you can shove treats into the little teeth and it takes her a while to get them out. And the third one is a more recent purchase. She actually got this for her birthday and it is a turtle. But it opens up like this. You put treats inside the turtle, fold it back up with the Velcro. Silicone molds for ice treats. I wish that I used these more. I had such good intentions of making little ice doggy treats for Sunny. They're a great idea if your dog isn't fussy with food. I wanted to use Greek yogurt, banana, peanut butter for dogs, blueberries, chopped up strawberries. I had the best intentions. Sunny hates anything sweet, so I've never actually used the silicone moulds. Tried them once, she could not be less interested. But although I personally never use them, I do think they're a really good idea, especially in the summer when the weather's warm. And just in case you're wondering, dogs are allowed ice cubes when it's hot, as long as they haven't got heat stroke. If your dog is healthy and it's a warm day and you need a way to cool them down, they are really good. But make sure they're supervised so they don't choke on the ice cubes. The next thing I talked about was a portable water bottle. This is still an essential for me. It comes with us on every single walk. This is actually the second one we've had. The first one did break after a little while, but it did take quite a long time to be fair, and we use it so regularly. The button just went so the water wasn't coming out as smoothly. But basically, you just hold it down, press the button, the water comes out, your dog can drink it from the bowl. And the great thing is, if they don't drink all the water, you tip it back up, press the button again, and it goes back into the bottle. Which is why this is my favourite type of bottle, because you're not going to waste any water. It's 
small enough to fit in your bag, it's easy to carry. Last but not least for the food section, I briefly mentioned that Sunny Eats Butternut Box. I would really, really recommend them as a food. It might be TMI, but if you're a dog parent, you're gonna wanna know this. It makes their poos really nice and solid. You don't wanna be picking up a sloppy poo. Butternut poos truly are the perfect turd. <laughs> this video isn't sponsored or anything, but I have got a referral code, just like everyone gets if they sign up. My code is Hannah656. So if you use that code at checkout with Butternut Box, you will get 50% off your first box. The next category is leads and accessories. To those of you who watch my videos regularly, you probably know that I actually run a business now selling dog leads and accessories. It is something that I started because of having Sunny. The business is called Sunnyside, so I feel like this is the category for me. I know what I'm talking about with this one. I mentioned in the video two years ago that I'd heard that you shouldn't use leads with plastic clips because they can snap or break, and it's better to use leads with metal clips. I was correct. Definitely only use metal clasps. I've also learned that the shape of the clasp matters, so the ones that I use look like this. This is a sunny side lead. The ones that pull down on a little spring like this are nice and secure. These are a lockable carabiner clip, which looks like this. But this type of clasp on a lead is a pretty good all rounder. Naive little me, two years ago, made a big mistake. I showed in that video Sunny's name tag, which said Sunny on the front and just I microchipped on the back. That is not enough information and it is actually not legal in the UK to have a tag that looks like that. Luckily, I learned shortly after that video that you should never put your dog's name on their name tag or their harness purely because it makes your dog vulnerable. Let's say you're at the park with your dog, you let them off their lead, they're running, they're chasing their ball, they run into the distance and someone wants to snatch your dog. If they grab your dog, they can see their name tag, they know straight away their name, they're calling your dog, they're talking to your dog as if they know it. Your dog is much more likely to go with that person if they think they know them. It's also a legal requirement to have the following information on your dog's tag. So you need to have your surname or your initial and your surname or your full name, whatever you feel comfortable with, the first line of your address, your postcode and your phone number. I'll insert a little clip, but Sunny's tag now looks like this. It's still super pretty. It's got a little S on the front. It's got all the information it needs on the back. Moving on to dog harnesses. Two years ago, I wasn't quite sure what style of harness to put Sunny in. I just kind of wandered into Pets at Home and picked what I thought would fit her. I've now learned that the most comfortable style of harness for a dog is a Y-shaped harness, which looks like this. This is a size small and this is the size that Sunny actually wears. These are the ones that I sell. They're fully adjustable, but they're just really comfortable for dogs because they go under their arms. They don't go across their chest, so their shoulders can move freely when they run. And if they're fitted correctly, they're nice and secure too. A new essential that I've found is a safety light for nighttime walks, especially in the winter. I actually sell these as well because I found it really difficult to find these on Amazon. So I decided to source them myself. Believe it or not, this actually isn't me trying to plug my own business. I've only got blue ones or red ones left, but something that attaches to their lead or their collar or their harness at night time is really essential purely so they could be seen by other people by cars then we have the training lead again this is something that I had really good intentions with I thought I was onto a winner with this bad boy I felt like the best dog owner in Essex I was so excited to use it and it just didn't work for me like I said every dog is different it might be perfect for you and your dog particularly if you've got a bigger breed but this particular training lead was too heavy for Sunny she was like the size of a guinea pig when she was 11 weeks old and I tried to put this lead on her she could barely run, the poor girl. <laughs> it was so heavy for her. I kept getting tangled up in it, so I just abandoned the training lead in the end. It was just more effort than it was worth. Our next little category for today is travel. So two years ago, I showed this little car seat and I put the little pink and gray bed in the car seat. I would say this is probably the most common way for people to travel with their dogs in the car. Some kind of car seat with a little cozy bed. And as long as your dog has some kind of seat belt restraint attached to a harness, not a collar, that could be really dangerous if you have an accident and your dog gets jolted around their neck. But if they're wearing a harness and they're restrained by a dog's seatbelt, that is legal. But for me personally, it's not my best option. Since filming that video, I've actually invested in a car crate, which goes on the back seat of my car. I absolutely love it. If you've got a small breed, I would really recommend it. And I'll insert a little clip of what it looks like just to show you rather than explain what it's like. So you are now in the back of the car with me and this is what Sunny's car crate looks like. It's fabric, but it has metal bars all the way around it to keep it nice and sturdy and secure and safe. The crate comes in all different sizes depending on the size of your dog. It sits really nice and snug on this back seat. The seat belt is around the bottom of the crate and plugged in and this part of the seat belt has the handles tied around it and velcroed together. It has a couple of little compartments so it has this one on the top and also one that side by the door. I personally 
personally put Sunny in this way. I think a lot of people will probably have this opening by the door, but I prefer to put her in this way. I've got a little black towel on the seat to dry her little feet off before she gets in. But in this top compartment, I just keep some spare poo bags, a little slip lead just as a little backup. And then inside the crate, I've got this little waterproof bed. It is so good, especially in winter when her feet are really muddy because you can just take it out and give it a wipe down. I've got an old blanket in there for her and that's everything that's in the bed. She just literally trots in, goes into her crate, I zip it up like so and it's really nice to have the peace of mind when i'm driving in the front to know that she's safe and secure and i don't hear a peep out of her when we're driving she loves this little bed and as a family we've also done long journeys we did a four hour trip to leeds with a stop in the middle and she was fine in her crate the entire time it is roomier than it looks i think on this camera it looks quite small but she does have room to stand up and move around in there not that she really does she kind of just gets in it lays down and that's where she stays until we arrive grooming one of my favorite categories i absolutely love grooming sunny she doesn't love it as much as i do but i think it's a great way to bond and i really enjoy looking after her so a couple of years ago i said that i absolutely loved the groom professional baby fresh shampoo still love it to this day i still use the little puppy perfume as well and then i also bought another product from groom professional again from amazon this is the argan oil conditioner my groomer actually recommended that i get some kind of conditioner for sunny's fur it depends what type of fur your dog has got obviously she's half poodle so she's very curly and she needed a little bit of conditioner because she was getting very matted and when she's matted which is particularly bad in the winter for cavapoos, cockapoos, anything with a poo in them it can be a nightmare when they're wearing jumpers and coats so another thing my groomer recommended was this particular detangling spray it's from a company called Artero Cosmetics I bought it on quite a funny website online I can't remember what it was but it's basically for groomers and it's a dematting conditioner you spray it directly onto the mat rub the mat between your fingers and it comes out a lot more easily. I would really, really recommend it. And it smells minty fresh too. I think pretty much no matter what breed of dog you've got, it's important to brush them, get them used to a brush, but especially if you've got a cockapoo, cavapoo, anything like that, you need to be brushing them very regularly. The brush that I showed two years ago was this one. Obviously I've still got it. It's okay. It's definitely not my favorite though. And it's not Sunny's favorite either. And it's not the most effective for her type of fur. For example, these bristles, completely waste of time on curly fur. Instead, for Sunny, I start off with this Pet Tangle Teaser. I really like this. It doesn't get right down to the root, but it's really good for that first initial brush of just kind of like smoothing everything out a little bit. Then the main contender is the Slicker Brush. This one that I use from Amazon is perfect. It's got little bubbles at the end, so it's not too sharp against her skin. If you get this brush, you'll see that the bristles point in a certain direction. You can brush all different ways, depending on how matted or knotted your dog is. And then Sunny's groomer told me that your dog's not brushed until you can get a comb through it, because the comb never lies. If your dog has got any knots in its fur, the comb will detect them. Grooming wipes. I still use the same ones that I used two years ago. I find that I use them a lot more in the winter when we've been out for a walk if her feet are just a little bit muddy. I also mentioned some ear wipes and some eye wipes. I still use them, I still have them, but I have found a much more effective solution is this tear stain remover. If you've got a light colored dog, white, light blonde, even like that apricot colored fur, you might find that they get tear stains where their eyes kind of leak, they get little eye bogies and it stains their fur. It doesn't look the nicest, but a little bit of this tear stain remover on a cotton pad, do it regularly to try and get rid of it. And then I just do it every now and again as like maintenance. I mentioned in the previous video that I had some little finger toothbrushes to brush her teeth with. Again, these were perfect when she was a puppy, kind of to like desensitize her a little bit, get her used to having fingers in her mouth, but they are not that effective effective at actually brushing their teeth. So now we use this. I use the same toothpaste that I've always used. Again, got this on Amazon, it's liver flavored. But now I use this toothbrush, which has three separate heads to go around every single tooth all the way to the back. You don't have to do it every single day. Let's be realistic. Not a lot of people have got time for that and you don't wanna do it. Your dog probably doesn't want it done every single day. But once a week, something like that, to try and keep on top of it if you can. Even if it goes down to once a month, at least they'll be used to it, you know? Right, the medical section. My number one medical product for dogs was back then, still is now, Procolin. This is for when your dog's got an upset stomach. It comes in a little syringe. Looks like this. I've used quite a lot of it. It was about out here. If Sunny's got an upset tummy, I will squirt a little bit of this inside a piece of ham. There's a little guide on the back telling you how often to give it to your dog depending on their weight. I can give this to Sunny in the morning, the evening, and she's fine the next day. It is honestly a miracle worker. The only other medication that Sunny's on regularly is her flea and 
wormer. She has her flea treatment every three months and her wormer every single month. The next section of today is clothing. Two years ago in the video, and I quote, I said something along the lines of, I might put her in a coat or a jumper, raincoat, things like that if it's cold. Obsessed, fully obsessed. Little cable knit jumpers like this, they just own my heart. They are so cute on dogs. And for Sunny, they're actually needed because if I take her out when it's cold, she shivers. So I do like to put a little jumper on there when it's cold. She wears this style of jumper if it's not wet. The best coat I have found is this one. I found this last winter and it is honestly so good. It's from a brand called Ankle. Again, I got it on Amazon. It goes down her chest, around her tummy, Velcros at the back. It's got a fleece lining inside. It's got straps to go around her little legs at the back so the wind doesn't blow it up. It's got a little collar that looks really cute, but it also stops the wind. And most importantly, it's got a zip for the harness D-ring to go through. So she can wear the harness underneath, the coat on top, and you can still clip the lead to her really easily. And it's waterproof. I think one of the most popular brands in the UK when it comes to dog clothing is Equifleece. This is a typical Equifleece suit. I absolutely love them, they're an amazing company. The products are handmade, tailored to your dog. If you give the right measurements, they will fit perfectly. But for Sunny, unfortunately, she can't really wear these 24 seven anymore. If it's freezing cold and snowy outside, you will see her in an equa fleece. But with her type of fur, the curls, it is a nightmare for matting, really, really bad. I think the friction between the tight fitted fleece and her curls, is just a recipe for disaster. But if you haven't got a dog with tight, curly, fluffy fur, equa fleeces, perfect. We're getting through it, but the next category is toys. When Sunny was a puppy, I mentioned that I'd heard it was really important to have toys of different textures. I still stand by that to this day. Sunny has never chewed a piece of furniture in our house, and I do think that's partly down to luck. Her personality, she is quite a quiet dog, but also I made sure she had such a variety of textures amongst her toys. So she'd have like corduroy toys, silicone, soft, really hard. No matter what she wanted to chew, there was something in her toy basket that fit that, rather than our furniture. Her favorite type of toy is silicone toys, such as these. Sophie the giraffe, this is a baby toy. I thought if it's good enough for babies, it's good enough for Sunny. Little donut, little squeaky ball, this was from Tesco. Anything that's like this soft plastic that squeaks, the loudest toys are her favorite. But just remember, if you're bringing home a puppy, you can get all different bundles on Amazon of like cord toys, soft toys. Try and get a variety for them and don't forget the chew toys. Okay, and the final category is extra things I didn't know I needed. These weren't mentioned in the first video because I didn't know they existed, but now I would really recommend them. The first thing is a Furbo dog camera. I use this every single time I go out and leave Sunny alone. I thought at first I might become a bit obsessed with it and when I was out and about, be checking her all the time to make sure she's all right. But actually, you can set up the notifications, which also can go through to your Apple Watch if you've got one. So I know that unless I get a notification, she's fine, she hasn't moved, she's definitely still asleep. And it gives you such peace of mind when you're out and about to be able to check your phone and know that she's fine. They are a little bit more of an investment, but in my opinion, so worth it. The next thing, super random, this is plaque off powder. This is good for your dog's teeth. I put a little scoop of this in Sunny's dinner every single night comes with a little scoop, it's literally tiny. And this just helps with their teeth, it helps stop plaque building up. It's recommended by vets, it says it's for bad breath, tartar and plaque. And this is the second tub that I've got through of this, I really like it. This next thing's a little bit more niche, but sometimes during spring or summer, Sunny will itch her feet quite a lot, she'll lick her paws, and sometimes she looks really uncomfortable with it. I did a little bit of Googling and found that sometimes dogs can have yeast infections in their toes and their toenails. So I bought this on Amazon, it's from Paddy Paws, and it's an antifungal shampoo. If she's itching her paws a lot, I run a quick little bath, wash her feet with this, and she is good. It works literally first time for us. The next thing is actually a product of mine. It's not out just yet, but it's coming very soon, and it is a matte bag. So this is what it looks like. It opens out, so it unpops, and then it zips down the middle. It's padded, it's waterproof this side, and when you're out and about, say if you go to the pub or you go out for dinner, it gives your dog somewhere to sit. For Sunny, this really helps her settle. Knowing that she's got her place next to me, she's not walking around the cafe or the restaurant wherever we are, she's not wandering about the pub garden. It would be really good for training as well in their puppy stage to set down a mat and teach your dog to go to the mat. And it also comes with a little human pouch for your things. And when it folds up into the bag, you can pop their water bottle in there, a spare lead, 
a couple of toys, some treats, whatever you would like to take with you on your travels. But I put this on my essentials list because I wished I had something like this when Sunny was a puppy, but there was nothing on the market like it. So I thought, I'll make it myself. It's taken months to make it and it will be out in the next couple of weeks. So if you're interested, have a look on the Sunnyside website in a couple of weeks time. Adaptil calming products are another good thing to keep at the back of your mind. Particularly if I'm going to the vets with Sunny, I will use the Adaptil transport spray. All the Adaptil products have got calming pheromones in to calm your dog down. With the spray, you just spray it on their bed or their blanket 15 minutes before you travel and it will help calm them from the inside out. And the final thing on my list is actually another toy. This is called a flirt pole. I'd never heard of them before, but it's basically an extendable pole like this and then a big long wiry string and this tassely thing at the bottom. It is filthy because we only play with this in the garden but this will wear Sunny out in about 10 minutes. It's so handy and I think that is pretty much everything. That is everything that I didn't need that I thought I did, everything that I was right about and everything that I wish I knew about. If you found this video helpful please do give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below have you got a dog or are you getting a puppy? If so what's your dog called? What are you going to name them? What breed have you got? I want to know. I love all the dog details. Do subscribe to see my future videos. I do quite a lot of vlogs. I film up here at the office. I'm at Sunnyside Co HQ right now. If you want to see some more about some cute dog products, all things small business, my normal life too. Sunny's in every single video. That's a bonus. Stick around. Join the family. But for now, thank you very much for watching and Sunny and I will see you again next Sunday with another little video. Say bye bye everyone. Love ya!